Oh well, hello. Welcome back to Ringworm again. You'll never guess what. I'm still here. Haven't left. Never leave. Don't ever want to leave. Getting close, man. We're getting so close to getting this rolling. Those uh, two giant logs that were laying across here and the, all the other trees, I got one good log out of it, which I think I, I think I put in the last uh, cabin build video. Yeah, it wasn't one of the trees that was good. It was just like one log out of the tree. And there was another small one I took out. It was not really solid all the way through, but I milled that up. And all I've got left now is, uh, a few rounds to get out of the way. Look at this nice open area. Yeah, I just chopped all these up yesterday into little discs so I can actually pick them up without breaking my back. Got a lot of them burned. So the only thing left to do now is to make sure nothing could possibly fall and hit this thing in the next, uh, in the near future, in the next five or 10 years or whatever. If there's anything that looks like, you know, it's leaning hard at the cabin or is not even leaning, uh, you know, standing straight up, but it's within reach of the cabin uh, that's not healthy, it's gonna have to come down. So cabin will be somewhere here. Looks like this this cedar is leaning pretty hard right at it. We'll have to take that down. This uh, aspen is super not healthy, like all of them. It does have uh, one good crown there that looks all right, but all the rest is rotten out. There's even rot holes in the middle of the uh, main main trunk there. So I have to cut that down. That's actually a nice uh, size to mill up. But because I didn't get nearly as much millable wood out of these two giant aspen trees, I don't really have enough to do the floor of this thing yet. And I'm just to the point now, like I've been cutting trees and milling lumber for <laughs> too long. I need to switch it up and do something else that I want to get this thing started. You know, I'll get the floor joist, the whole frame put together and then put the half the flooring on it or whatever I have. And then I'll just have to mill some more up. But that little aspen would make possibly make a couple nice logs i don't know it's probably all rotty inside this has actually got a really hardcore lean that way which if it fell it might miss the cabin it looks pretty healthy but you know if it's leaning that hard now eventually it's gonna fall down and it's gonna fall right that way uh you gotta take that one down and then definitely these two you can see how that's really leaning hard that way and then this aspen's pretty straight up and down, but it's all rotty too. I just want to build something. Can a guy just build something? Oh my gosh, there are a few more. Look at these. I mean, one's real small, but that's a, a super lean right out here. Oh, and another one right next. To, okay. What you gonna do? Uh, well, it looks like I got the rest of my week cut out for me. Oh yeah, I definitely, definitely say this one should probably come down. What do you think? And look at this sucker. Whole thing's firewood. You see, isn't that crazy? It's completely hollow, totally ripped open, and there's still a green crown on it. Not too healthy. You guys saw uh, the video a few back that uh, just did a little how to on like how I cut trees down and stuff and talked about barber chairs where if you just cut from the back of the tree in the front of the tree can still stay together and the back of the tree can come out barber chair at you just pick right up and that's what I actually thought that was probably gonna happen with this tree 
because it's completely broken. I'll show you the inside, there's nothing left, but I don't know if you could see from that angle, but the top of it tried to come back. If I was standing right there with a big dumb grin on my face, I would have got smacked in the face. Yeah, you can see how much of the tree didn't fall. So this part tore off and came back a bit. But that's cool. I can see that's where I cut through and it's actually cut all the way through to here. But it wasn't, uh, that's what happens when you have no hinge wood. There's nothing for it to stay connected to the stump and actually uh, direct the fall. See, yeah, look at that. It didn't even use the face cut at all. Nothing. <laughs> Well, what do you think? Should we try to mill that one up? I can't do it anymore. I'm starting to get dizzy when I stand up. I stopped and had a couple extra snacks, but I think the best thing for me right now is to take my computer and guitar down to the gazebo. I think I've played guitar like once this year, so yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Ah, this place is fantastic. Why don't I do this every day? I had a couple of my friends come visit yesterday just for a few hours. Hi Randy. Hi Jody. Randy seemed to think that the uh, gazebo was too nice for ringworm. I don't know if he was trying to hint that I should burn it down or what, but I really only use it for like a month and a half out of the year in the middle of the hottest days, which are coming up pretty soon. Just like this. I get a day, you know, I can't stand in the sun all day long, chainsaw and dragging logs and stuff, and yeah, and you can't just sit down up there, you know, at the picnic table or something in the middle of the day either. There's not really a good shady place to sit, but also the bugs just eat you alive. So that's why I built this. I assume most of you saw the videos of this. I'll put a link here to the playlist. You have to invest some serious time to watch all the videos of building this. I can't remember how many it was, but a lot. It's all, of course, built by just one knucklehead with only a chainsaw and a chainsaw mill. Yeah, I couldn't decide if I was going to play guitar first or do some video editing first and next thing I knew I was waking up. This place is freaking awesome. <laughs> Man, I got a couple more giants. I think this guy's going to stay. I think get that huge old limb coming off that side that if it did fall, it'd go out that way, which is all right. Just don't want it to go that way. I've walked around this one about seven times and can't really decide when it comes down where it's going to go. Unfortunately, I have to take my knife throwing target down off of there, but the good thing about this, I can cut it down right out here in this open area and leave it and take care of it later. I don't have to do it right now. I'll do it like in the mornings when it's really cool or something. pretty close to my feet. I'd have left it on there and just cut the tree down, but I'm sure at some point I'd go to buck this up and uh, end up chopping into a bunch of screws. quite surprised at how decent that is yeah there's not really a single chunk that would be usable for building however I really only need about six foot logs to be millable because that's what fits on my saw horses there so yeah it's not bad actually I don't mind if they're crooked and they're only six feet long it doesn't really matter like 
how much bend is in it. You can still mill it. You lose a little bit, but it's not like milling a, you know, a 12 foot log that's like this and you cut through it and you basically get nothing out of it. So if this thing's solid all the way up, I do a bunch of six footers or six, eight, whatever footers, and I can use it for furniture. Check it, check it, one, two. Look at how perfectly the cabin's gonna fit right here. You got the big root ball there and the massive stump. There are a few stumps right there. And then there's a stump in there, which I could get out, but I don't really have anything to fill the hole with. But I mean, like everything, I just like the, the area to dictate where the stuff is built. You know, the trees at hand, the size of the trees dictates the size of the building. So this is, I mean, this, this spot's great. It's relatively flat, so it's going to go right here. You know, the other thing is these, uh, these aspens put up uh, suckers. So like the roots go out and then another tree will pop up. They're basically cloning themselves. And there are tons of suckers all over the place, and I just knock them down. But the, the cool thing is, if you clear out an area where it can actually get some light and you let those suckers grow, you have like six foot tall spindly trees in a year. I think they grow in a year. They get as tall as I am. Yeah, here, look. This is all uh, suckers from the quaking aspen. These guys, this guy. See, this is, there was nothing here in the fall. This is all perfectly flat, nothing growing. So you can see it's only, what is it? Beginning of July now, look at this thing. It's already seven feet tall. So they grow up fast. There are a few over there that are probably 10 feet tall by the wood pile. So I don't like that it's like completely cleared out and you just see a bunch of stumps, but you know, I'll just let those grow up and it'll fill right back in. The forest is kind of cool like that, you know? It's time to build, can you believe it? Oh, this is glorious. I just got a total hit of energy. I'm exhausted and sweaty and dirty and I was getting run down, but now that this is done and I can start putting stuff together, I'm super excited. Oh, would you look at that, it's so beautiful. <clears throat> oh, I got <clears throat> something in my eye. Eyes. Oh, it's gorgeous. All right, let's see, we gotta do a little math. So I think legally you can build something up to 200 square feet. My understanding is that's the actual usable square footage inside. So I've got long enough boards to do a 12 foot side. So 200 divided by 12 leaves you 16 and three quarters feet. So let's do 17 because the walls will be, well the walls will be three and a half and then another inch inside. So that'll take off eight inches better part of eight inches either direction. Yeah, let's just do, let's do 12 by 17. That comes out to 204 and in actuality, it'll probably be like less than 190. I mean, otherwise 17 is a good weird number. So you gotta challenge the mental arithmetic by doing weird numbers that don't divide easily. All right, gotta uh, take a minute and uh, work on my blueprints. I almost got them finished. Oh, here's, here they are right here clear out my uh, workspace here my desk so we're gonna do 12 by 17 floor joists go this way so we obviously need a post on all four corners probably another post on each side and then since these are gonna be 12 feet long maybe we'll put a big fat board right underneath those to support those and probably put one post in the middle so how many does that leave that's eight nine dude See, you don't need to overthink these things. Everything just works out perfectly. So as long as I can make a pad or a post or whatever for all four corners, the middle of all four sides, and then one in the middle, that's 18. <laughs> I knew there was a reason that my trailer fit exactly 18 bags of concrete. Now the question is, is two bags per post enough? I think what I'm gonna do, 
you're not really going to be able to dig posts like a fence or something because this is what the ground's like anywhere you dig i don't know if you can tell but these are like the size of cars everywhere you go so maybe what i do is find where all the posts are going to go dig down as much as i can if i hit a boulder or something it doesn't matter i could actually build up above the hole maybe i make like a box dump as much concrete in it as possible whatever goes in the holes fine otherwise the top would be like a pad i do think i'm going to do just like everything else i'm going to have this thing stick up off the ground a bit maybe a couple feet you know like my tent deck or like the uh, man cave is that you don't have to worry about rodents and stuff getting under there and if you need to get under there for any reason it's easy to just lay down and scoot in you make nine pads and then i can just set rounds on top of it like i always do you just have to find a bunch of cedar rounds like you know that uh, they don't really have to be that big around but you know a couple feet tall set them on the pads set the whole floor frame on top of those i mean it's it's like it's almost done you know do you feel that too yeah we're getting close close to finished that's 12 just fit between the tree and the stump that should be fine and then 17 i want to miss that root ball over there so maybe i just put one peg right by the root ball oh the boulder right there huh oh give it a try That looks big. Holy Moses. 200 square feet. That's palatial. All right. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? Or so they say. It's probably never been proven, but let's try it. 20 feet point eight is nine inches. 20 feet, nine inches. Let's see what A squared and B squared have to say. 20. It's only off by about four inches. That's not too bad. That's close enough, right? Let's just split the difference. That'll be close enough. Yeah. What's a guy gonna do with all this space? King size waterbed? Swamp waterbed? plenty big i mean i could live in the man cave i mean i live in a tent so of course i can live in the man cave but twice that size is going to be fantastic longer term because you know whatever size you have whatever size room or garage or house or whatever you just fill up to you know you expand to that size i can foresee not filling this thing up for years except for a furniture i want to make some super rad weird furniture oh so exciting <laughs> this is awesome Two gallons today and I think I peed twice all day do they make like a backwoods IV like you could put a camel back on or something and then just run it right into your arm that'd be terrific I'd like to run my food through there too then I wouldn't have to stop eat all the time tactical that's what I need is a tactical IV Let's make sure I got enough that are I think I cut all the 12 footers like 12 and a chunk so just make sure I can actually do 12 yeah, 12, 3, and it looks like they're all at least that much, which is why I could almost not fit the mill on my rails, because I cut, cut them so long. 12, 2. All right, we'll do exactly 12 footers then. So let's see here. Maybe for the outside, I use these thinner giant ones and not rip them down. Just cut one edge off so it's flat set it up on edge you could do big fat ones like that for the four sides and then for the joists i'll take the biggest boards and rip them down the middle so they'll be uh maybe two by eights or so yeah that's 16 17 17 
16. So yeah, they'll be about two by eights. And I'm pretty sure if I put those like 20 on, 20 on center or something, that should be plenty enough. I think the longest span will be, yeah, it's only gonna be six feet. Yeah, those will be plenty big. Do you feel it? You feel it in the air, that excitement? Yeah, it's all right. It's pretty cool. So the 17 foot side, I don't have 17 footers. So I guess I'll put a couple together like that. Let's see, I could overlap them. No, then the siding won't come out right. So I'll have to butt it like that and then put another little plate on the inside like that. Actually the one that's in the middle. So I have this on this side, another one like that over here. And then the metal one would be fine if it overlaps because that's a, that'll be underneath the cabin. And there's going to be a post right where they meet up there, where they meet up there and there as well. It's pretty technical the way I figure this stuff. Whoa, that is a gnarly looking bug. Please go away. That's just a biting fly. Oh man, they're so nasty. Whew. And since I uh, got super dizzy when I stood up just now, I think we'll pick this up tomorrow. All right, let's see if we can find some junk lumber for those uh, footing boxes. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make all nine at the same time just because it's gonna take too much lumber unless I can find that much garbage, but usually if it's that garbagey, I just burn it. So maybe I'll dig a few holes, make a few boxes, pour a little concrete in those, and then move on to the next few. Not sure which kind of concrete I got. I think, I think it'll set up within a day anyway, enough to take the boxes off. Yeah, there's a bunch of garbage in, oh yeah, here's some garbage, uh, Aspen just been sitting out here forever because it was not usable. So I'm thinking each footing only gets two bags of concrete. I can't imagine how thick that is exactly. I'll probably make it as wide as the widest log I might uh, set the place on should be, I don't know, let's just say like 12, 14, 16 inches or something, make a box, and then it only has to be as deep as two bags of concrete at very most. I mean, there's also going to be a hole dug out underneath, get some of the loose dirt and topsoil stuff off of there. So what do you think? Two bags that big, maybe three, four, five inches or something. You know, actually, I think I'm going to go dig a couple holes right now while it's still sort of cool come back here in a few hours and uh, put the boxes together in the shade. I hate when you start digging a hole and then you hit a rock and you gotta move back to dig the rock out and then before long you don't know where the center is. Hate it, just hate it, you know? Oh, there's some dirt there. Look at real dirt. <laughs> That's it. This is as far as you can get without hitting rocks. This is gonna be a long day. Maybe I just make the uh, footings right on top of this garbage. The reason I like to do this instead of like putting a post in the ground, I like to set stumps basically on top of the ground, maybe on a concrete pad or something, but, and then set the whole frame, whole house right on top of it. So that way, if and when the stuff rots out, uh, the stumps rot out, it's easy just to like jack the whole place up an inch, pull it out, put another one underneath it. And similarly, if I find that one of the corners is sinking down, it's super easy just to put a taller stump in there. <laughs> Stupid rocks. Now what would one do? Would one pry that thing out? Leave a big hole you gotta fill with concrete? Or would you just leave it, put the concrete right over top of it? Uh, it's one of these nice flat rocks. Those are good for stuff. Of course I broke it up a bit, but 
I got a couple of big, big ends of these that I thought would be cool to make a table from. I don't think my shoulders are going to hold up through nine holes. No, nope. let's get a saw. Yeah, power tools to the rescue. Is there anything you can't do with a 20 year old Ryobi tool? It's like a giant uh, sweet potato. Not quite as many rocks in this hole, that's nice. Wow, look at that. That's like real normal people dirt. <laughs> I only did this fourth one just because it was in the shade. <laughs> but I got three of them I think ready, so let's go cut up some boxes. that'll work don't you think I got a uh, different size lumber so uh, the ones with the real deep hole I guess I only need a box that's like a few inches high and the one that's uh, I couldn't dig down at all because of giant rocks so just sit right on top of course it'll work Sawyer beetles are out. They've been all over for the last few days. Take a look. Big suckers, huh? Big crazy antenna. That's not even a particularly big one. Wow, you guys know I build everything with green wood. I've never uh, done anything with this aspen once it's seasoned. That saw will almost not cut through this and it's a fresh battery. It is so freaking hard. Yeah, I tried to pound a nail and it just split the board. I got to pre-drill all these. I don't know if I had the patience to build a cabin out of this stuff if it were all seasoned up. Good thing is, since this shrinks and splits a lot, if you build with it green, it pins it in place, like when I do roofs and floors and stuff, it pins it in place and then lets it dry out there without twisting and getting too funky. See, there's a reason for the madness. Yeah, that's gonna be way more than two bags. I think uh, I'm gonna have to sink these in a little bit. I really just want the top of the concrete to be a little bit above the uh, ground. That way, any water that hits it will have some, some place to run off and not go down in it and then the log gets wet all the time. Good thing is, the way I'm building this, one of these, from the lowest one to the highest one, could be a foot or two different, but since I'm just gonna put log rounds on top of it to set the cabin on, it doesn't really make any difference. And it actually, I mean, concrete is kind of self-leveling and that it's a liquid but I actually wouldn't care if it's not even level if the top of the top of each pad was tipped off to the side a little bit that would be fine too
Oh, pretty good. What a dummy. There's no way I'm going to be able to get these boxes off in one piece. For some reason, I thought I'd set them in there, pour the concrete, let it set a little bit, and then just pull the box off. That's all right. I can find enough scrap to build uh, six more. I'm going to get these three in here and pour the concrete just to see how much it takes up. I mean, if I need three times as much, then i got to plan on making a run out of here. It's like a half a day to go get a bunch of concrete. Be a whole lot easier if I was doing this in the middle of a big city, you know? Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, all within a mile or two. Actually, I'm not even sure if there's any reason to take these boxes off of here. Just do the concrete, leave them on, let them dissolve. I don't think it's going to make that big a difference. Well, I got plenty of time to think about it, I guess. And certainly, if I wanted to get the boxes off, it would make more sense to not be packing uh, dirt in the edges here. All right, that looks pretty good. Oh man, these disco bugs are all over the place. Can't remember if I put a picture of them on uh, one of the videos before with the microscopes and whatnot. Sarah and I call them disco bugs because they're covered. If you zoom in, you can see all the individual scales are like this brilliant green. Can't remember what it's called, some kind of leaf weevil. It's a weevil because it's got the funny nose on it. I'll show you a picture. Pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> you never know looking at them. I mean, they're like shiny green, but you wouldn't know that they look like that. Green immigrant leaf weevil. Popped right into my head, just like that. I think those are gonna work great. All right, run down and grab some concrete and Phillips. Oh, I guess I have to use my shower water. There's no other water out here right now. These are only 60 pound bags. That's barely gonna be enough for the shallowest uh, footing. Hmm, well, maybe I'll put some of these rocks I dug out in the bottom of the real deep ones and I'll just have to put more than two bags in. Yeah, I'm on city water out here. You can, if you only look at this end of the hose, you could almost believe it. Got to remember to pay your bill. Oh, that breeze is the most beautiful thing. Feels great to have a day where I'm not wearing a long sleeve shirt and chainsaw pants. Almost feel naked. Not quite. Not quite. Almost. Take at least three bags for each one. I think that's going to work great. Of course, I don't have enough concrete to do all those, but that's all right. I don't mind going, sitting in the air conditioning for a few hours. I mean, gas is so cheap. Why not do it, right? Just a little filler. Somebody got my concrete wet.
Ooh, that one's just barely high enough. I think for the rest of them, I'm going to try to fill the hole in a little bit and bring it up. I'd like this to be, like I said, just above the ground level. Hey, look, look what I found. I forgot I had uh, a few long worm-eaten boards that I didn't want to put inside the man cave because I was afraid there were still, still worms in it. So we got enough boxes. Yeah, there's a rock that wants to be part of my house. Ooh, got lucky on that one. Got really lucky. Look. Concrete and showers. Great combo. Just got three left to do and I got about three hours before it rains. One, two, three. And the other uh, six are done. Pretty happy with these, really. I'm going to have to give it a few days to set all the way up before I put a bunch of weight on it. But they're, they're, uh, they're pretty sexy, if you ask me. One piece of sod and all of ringworm. Oh, baby! <laughs> Funny the things that make you excited. <laughs> yeah. That's more like it. right back in. Backwoods trash compactor. I think I'm going to keep these. I got a few more of them laying around. Might be able to make some kind of walkway or something. nice found it's a lot easier to clean this stuff up before you build the floor a lot of the stuff I've built and then you want to get all the junk out from underneath it so it doesn't attract rodents and stuff and then you know all the tools and uh, screws and everything you drop through there you can find a lot easier not that I ever make mistakes or drop tools that is gonna work great it freaking looks enormous I mean it, it looks like it's at least three times the size of the man cave. Well, of course, the 
outside walls are only going to come to the middle of these so you lose uh, a foot to either side and then you know the inside walls will eat up another three and a half four inches so it won't be quite that big but to me that looks massive it's a great spot too huh i like this it's gonna be really cool all right so we need uh what do we need some cedar rounds unfortunately all the big cedar without any rot in it usually gets laid aside for milling I could run down to the area we cleared with all the cedars and grab a couple of those logs. Really doesn't even need to be that big around the rounds. I mean, if you think that you could build this on a four by fours, so certainly having like a six or eight or 10 inch log should be plenty. Actually, I know where one log is that fits the bill. It was wavy and not millable. I think I cut it like a year ago and it's been sitting in a puddle ever since, but <laughs> it'll probably work. Yep, that'll do. You know what'd be cool is like how I built the gazebo with like purposely really bowed legs. I guess these aren't going to be very tall, so you wouldn't see the bow enough, but it would be, it'd be cool to have each one of the legs bowed out a little bit so it looked like it was squishing down. I think that might be a big ask though to find enough curved logs like that. I mean, if I'd have thought of it a month or two ago as I was cutting those cedars, I could have saved all the cur curved ones instead of chopping them up into firewood. Actually, let's run down to this spot that uh, has the pile of cedars that I cut. it'll all be perfect too short to uh mill still pretty good size oh man i just unhooked the trailer i'm gonna go back and grab the trailer and load these in there oh man i can't can't wait to dive into those those are so fun to mill up small straight and most importantly all the brush cutting and burning and chipping is done <laughs> you know there's no sense in hauling those up there right now i can't uh I can't set them in place for a few days until that stuff's cured and it's supposed to rain in like half an hour. I think I should go back to the gazebo, don't you? Seems like the most reasonable thing to do. Just thinking I might have to uh, might have to find some windows pretty soon this thing is really gonna build fast now now that all the grunt works done I mean putting the floor together will take I mean even with weather and other stuff I have to keep up on you know probably take a week so that means you know a week or two from now I'll be framing walls and I don't have any idea of what windows I can find or you know the layout of the place we'll have to figure that out probably in the next video we'll look at that I've been waiting until I had all the concrete out of my trailer, so now I can take my trailer to the habitat uh, restores and all the used building materials and find some windows. I might have to go to a couple different ones, and unfortunately, they're all a pretty long drive from here, which is fine. I mean, I'll go there and I'll find other building materials, other stuff that I'll need. I need some, you know, tar paper. I think I have enough nails to do just about this whole thing. I've been stocking up on those for the last couple of years, and my dad brought up a load of them last time he came. But there's a lot of other stuff I'll need to definitely, I'm going to have to get some Tyvek or something. Because these walls actually will be insulated, which means I can't just have the water going through the siding. I'm going to do the siding the same way as I've done other stuff where it's just going to be, you know, like this floor. It's just going to be a bunch of horizontal boards nailed on. And then I'll caulk the gap. And then because it's green wood, you know, the wood shrinks, the gap opens up. And I'll probably have to caulk it two or three times over the course of a year. But 
if it's insulated, you can't do like everything else I do. I just don't care, you know, if there's a crack in the wall, I just let them go for a few months, then caulk them all up. But if there's rain going through there into the insulation, then we got real problems. So I'm going to have to get some, I don't know, some kind of Tyvek or something. Maybe I'll find something at the, at the building store, whatever. We'll find something. Might have to make a point to meet up with Tito too, because I think I'm going to need a, uh, a laser level to cut these nine stumps, these nine rounds to set the whole thing on. Not really sure that I could just use my old uh, bubble level on a string and level all nine of them well enough. I think that's going to be trouble. So I'll have to grab that in the next few days. Huh. Lots to think about. Lots to figure. Catch you next week, eh? What am I, Canadian? Ugh. No offense, I didn't mean to look like... Never mind. <laughs>